it was one that um, Jeff wanted to speak to, but I'm going to say it. We need you. So Jeff said something before which isn't true. Um, I'm not going to present for the next couple of hours. You're going to be involved in a really interesting and thought-provoking conversation over the next couple of hours. Involved in that conversation will be Gideon Baker. Involved in that conversation will be Mike Crow, who is Mike Heidi. Come on up, Mike. And involved in that conversation will be Kate Porrett, who is also right here. Come on up, Kate, and come and join us. Give him a round of applause. watch and wait and hope that somebody else says what you're thinking. If you squirm in your seat or you make a little move, I'm going to come over to you and I'm going to ask you to join in the conversation. Because we want you involved. This is not a presentation, it is a conversation. So conferences are too often sit, watch and wait for the day to go by. There won't be a day that goes by, there'll be only a few minutes that go by <coughs> from the time you tweak into the conversation to the time that we want to bring you in. Einstein, this young fellow up here, um, said something that I think should guide us through today, and that is, we won't solve tomorrow's problems with the thinking that got us into them. I'm not saying that we have problems, what I'm saying is we need to be willing to open our minds up to new ideas, and around this table and around this room are thousands of years of experience in tourism, in business, in hospitality, in networking, in socialising, and coming up with great ideas. And I want you to chime in. Our speakers are going to put their heart and soul on the line. They're going to speak with passion about the things that they love. And I want you to respond to that and respect that and come back with the same. Tourism is absolutely vital to this part of the world. You know it. And the evidence is there. 22% of the region's working population work directly or indirectly in tourism. They have their well-being supported by this fabulous, wonderful industry that you pour your heart and soul into. Let's make sure that grows, that that is vibrant, that there is there for future generations. We've seen in the last couple of days the latest tourism statistics from Tourism Research Australia showing that international visitor nights to this part of the world are up 1%. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Territory's had a tough time and we know that. We know that our core target markets, our international markets have had tough economic times. But I tell you what, around the world, we're seeing growth at five, six and seven percent. In fact, Europe and Asia Pacific, our home place, had six percent growth in the, last tw uh, in the last financial year. We know we had tough times during the GFC, but we have consistently seen international arrivals to other destinations growing. You know and I know that this place has as much to offer as anywhere in the world. It can motivate and inspire a customer to want to say the most amazing things about their experience. How do we take that moment and share that with people all around the world and say, come here to have the same? According to the UNWTO, we're going to see 3.5% growth. I want you to be a part of the conversation today on how we achieve 3.5% growth or beyond that that it isn't just 1%. We want to see above that. The opportunity is there. That's our market, Asia and the Pacific. Huge growth over the next 20 years, and we want to be a part of that. But it's your ideas that are going to help get us there. Nobody else is going to come up with them. You're the 20% that are going to make 80% of the difference. This little mate is my last slide before I hand over to our first speaker, Kate. And he makes me smile, and he makes me laugh, and he makes me think of my beautiful kids. Because it is confidence that drives growth. So the conversation today is about a new horizon. It is not about looking back on where we were and could have been and should have been. It is about looking forward today 
at a new horizon and saying, how are we going to grab the opportunity that stands in front of us? Kate is going to speak first. You can read in the program all about Kate, um, but I'm going to say a few things that I know about her, and that is, this is a person who speaks with passion. She is a passionate ambassador for Tennant Creek, for the Territory, and for people engaging in real life experiences. And I'm going to let her stand up either on her spot or come on up to the front and share a little bit of her passion with you. Now, you can do uh, the interaction in one of two ways. You can throw your hand straight up while Kate is speaking and chime in with a, uh, with a point and, and open up the conversation, or you can wait until she's finished and I'll pick on one of you to, uh, to speak. And you don't want that, do you? So you want to speak voluntarily. That's right. So, Kate Ferron, Nick and Ninu, Arts and Culture, is going to inspire us with, this, uh, with a few words. Over to you, Kate. Wow, that's a daunting introduction. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark. Something I'd also like to add is that uh, every involvement I've had with Mark, I absolutely love his positive nature and, and uh, he's a very motivating, inspiring man himself. So thank you very much, Mark, and thank you Tourism Central Australia for the invitation to be here today and to speak. Um, good morning, everybody. Morning. Those who... Morning. Those... Thank you. Those who don't... Uh, no slideshow, no lights and whistles. I'm just going to talk. Um, those who don't know me, I've been involved in tourism in Tennant Creek for the last 11 years in a variety of positions. And uh, for the last two years, I've been managing the Nick and Inu Art and Culture Centre. And um, where we all know the struggles that tourism has been through in recent years, well, I've got one foot in that camp and the other foot in the art camp, and that has its struggles as well. Just to give you a point of reference, in 2009-10 financial year, 25 out of the 50 Aboriginal Arts Centres in Central Australia uh, broke even at best or made a profit. In the next financial year, that figure dropped to just seven. Okay, so there's a lot of hurt going on in that world as well and a lot of reinvigorating and looking at different ways of doing things and, and keeping the doors open and, and surviving through this cycle. And I'm absolutely determined to see it as a cycle and um, there's a lot of people battening down the hatches and keeping the doors open. And we need to uh, think of new ways to keep moving forward. Um, the question that was posed for this um, discussion in terms of is Central Australia the place to be or a tired old destination, I, I think we've got tired operators. Uh, are we all working really, really hard, harder than ever? You know, people are um, struggling to maintain the same staff levels, so everyone's doing more and more and wearing more hats and taking on more roles themselves and feeling a bit strained, perhaps, and feeling a bit stretched. Um, I think you need to congratulate yourselves for still trading and keeping your doors open. And I don't mean to sound doom and gloom. It, is a, it has been a difficult time, um, but it's an opportunity to step back and reflect and look at who's that on the mobile? <laughs> opportunity to step back and reflect on where your business is going. And days like today are awesome for working on your business rather than in your business. I had the pleasure of a drive down from uh, Katie's nodding ahead. We had a chat last night about that glorious drive from Tennant Creek to Alice Springs. That's four or five hours of just zoning out and it's amazing the ideas that came to me in that drive yesterday. One of the things I really do suggest you all do is, is get out in your car and go for a drive and look around your region and just let those, those thoughts come. If you're, if you're one of the people that's frantically working seven days a week in your business, you need to take that time out. You need to step back and have a look, take a bird's eye view at what's going on in your business. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunities moving forward for um, refreshing the way we do business and refreshing the way we promote Central Australia. Um, Marie's um, talk this morning with closing your eyes, I agree with what Mark was saying, how glorious that was. That's the essence. We're being challenged by the term outback from all boundaries. Everyone wants a bit of being the outback. Okay, we need to get back to what's the authentic cultural identity of Central Australia and, and really communicate that sense of beautiful space and fresh air and open wide spaces that we have, the glorious um, countryside, but also the beautiful people. Okay, every single person, I am very passionate about Tennant Creek and I am here to bang on a little bit about the Barclay region. Every single person that spends any time in Tennant Creek living in our community and then leaves, the one thing they miss is 
is not the range of food and vegetables available at the supermarket, okay? It's the people, okay? Even our visitors coming through. We've been um, pushing the fact for several years now that Tennant Creek is full of really friendly people and it's small enough that you can, you know, go up and chat to the locals at the bar. And that's what we're finding people are reacting to. It's that people connection, that people power. So um, it's... In times when we're all doing it hard and you can't afford perhaps to go any lower in your prices to compete or to get more business in, think about what's compelling people to come and visit this region. And it's about engagement, it's about connecting with people, and it's about understanding the character of Central Australia and the Northern Territory. Um, I, I'm... Um, in my role at Ninkaninu, we, uh, we certainly engage, as I said before, in both arts and tourism, and I'm in the constant company of wonderful Warramunga people. And the people who work at Ninkaninu with me are fantastic ambassadors for their culture. And I've, I'm blessed to have a cultural advisory board and elders in, in my community to talk to, to get advice on where we go and what we're doing and what stories we're telling. And I'd really encourage that that finding that soul of Central Australia. Talk to our old people, um, both Aboriginal elders, but also people who have been here for a long time. Capture that history, trust in their experience and their expertise and their knowledge, and bring that into your business. How do you get people, you know, we're drive market, our demographic in Tennant Creek and the Barclay region is definitely drive market. How do we get people to stay? Um, Brendan, are you here today, Brendan Heenan? How could you not want to model your business on a man who... 20 Brogger Awards? Oh, OK. <laughs> Maybe I'm predicting. <laughs> predicting the future. Hmm. Yes, and two nationals. So how, how would you not want to model yourself on, on a business? I know one thing Brendan does very well is engage with his customers, with his visitors. Do you think they're going there for that bit of flour and eggs and milk and sugar on a Sunday morning? Or, or is it about the opportunity in that pancake session to engage with other people and have that social opportunity? OK? Imagine you're... Again, I'm talking drive market. I know your demographic in Alice Springs is much wider than that. But for us, the drive market, imagine you're Mr and Mrs just retired, OK, being living um, your own uh, lifestyle and... Um, obviously, and, and happily married and been together 30, 40 years, you know, congratulations, wonderful. And then get in your four-wheel drive and caravan and maintain yourself in that space for about three months travelling around the country. Do you think you wouldn't want to attend a pancake session <laughs> and mix with all the others? OK, so it's, it's not about... And, and, of course, it's the value add and the feeling of getting a, a benefit. But, but the key part to me is that opportunity, that creating that engagement, giving people an opportunity to mix with others. Tourism is a people business. If you're not into people, then you shouldn't be in this business. It's about engaging with our visitors and engaging with our customers and trying to give the best service that we can. One of the things that concerns me in our industry is the little attention some of us pay to those front counter staff. Okay? The people who are first representing our business are often the, maybe the lowest paid or you know, the waitress in the cafe or the reception staff at the, the motel or the caravan park. We need to be investing in our staff and making sure that they're well trained in how we want service delivered to our customers. Okay? Um, not picking on any particular business. Roadhouses in general um, struggle to keep staff. Oh, all of us are having trouble with retention of staff, I know, but roadhouses are, are renowned for having um, backpackers employed some barely speak English. How can you go to that person and get information about the surrounding area okay, when they arrived three days ago? We really need to invest some knowledge and expertise in our front of house. We need to be giving compelling, brilliant service and giving people lots of reasons to use all that Facebook, Twitter, social media to tell a great story about our business. Because every person who comes through your doors is an ambassador. I knew I was going to have trouble. <laughs> Anyone who knows me, I'm, I'm ten minutes is not long enough. Um, oh, you've thrown me now. <laughs> that ambassadorship is really important, um, and we want ambassadors for the whole region. One thing I'm very, very um, defensive of in in Tennant Creek, Barclay, is uh, we should all be helping each other out. Central Australia stretches from Newcastle Waters, Elliot 
250 k's north of Tennant Creek, all the way down to where are we drawing the line? The gentleman here from Cooper PD, put your hand up. I wanted to congratulate you for coming. So Elliot to Cooper PD and, and, and across to the Queensland border, I know in our region, um, is a massive area. You, I'm hoping that you're agreeing with the regional perspective and, and we should be feeding on to each other and supporting each other and making um, positive recommendations about people travelling through and where are you going next and making sure that you have a good stay. Don't finish with the, the moment that, that the transaction's done. Be ambassadors yourself for the whole of Central Australia and forward recommend. Yes, sir? Basically, we're all BICs whether we like it or not. That's very true. That's very true. And look, even the supermarket and the news agents and, and that's, that's another thing in your community and it's perhaps it's something you do well in your community. In smaller communities, it's really easy to get the, the staff at all the various services on board. Your local mechanic, you know, everyone. It's, it's said all the time, tourism is everybody's business and, and we need to make it very positive, dynamic. We need to um, work with the soul that is Central Australia, the soul of this um, continent, okay? So it's about um, working within Okay, the, the financial limitations that are imposed on all of us because it has been tough times, I believe it's turning around. I, I will not. I might have a foot in two trouble camps, but I'm still walking. Okay, and still talking. <laughs> um, thank you for tolerating me rambling on. Um, please remember that anyone leaving this region and heading south, okay, there's the face of the businesses that they're going down to. And you have an opportunity to, to um, make sure that they're positive about the journey that they're heading south. I'm the face where they're heading north, okay? It's about looking after each other and, and, and making sure that our region is represented, unified, whole, positive, and, and inspiring, and um, oh, I've lost the word. I think I'm trying to wind up in my two minutes. Um, Congratulations on coming here today because it all means that you are passionate about your businesses and passionate about making a difference and moving forward and being, you know that saying, you, we all need to be the change that we want to see in this industry. It is up to us and it is up to us to work together and, uh, and make sure that the good times ahead are even better. Thank you very much. Begin the, oh, um, let's begin the conversation there. Before I get um, Gideon to jump up and join us, um, I heard a great speaker one day uh, talk about going into a community to do one of these motivational, let's get into the conversation uh, workshops. And he got to the um, roadhouse on the outside of town and said to the guy behind the counter, what's new? What's happening in town? What should I go and see? And the guy said, mate, there is nothing to see in this town <laughs> that you wouldn't have seen in a hundred other places. The best thing to see is the farewell sign on the southern side of town. Just push on, mate, because down the road is the guy at Cooper Pete and he's fantastic. So the speaker thought, well, it's going to be a tough old day. He got into the workshop and who came up to welcome him? But the guy from the roadhouse who was the chair of the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> and he said, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to tell you now, this is going to be offensive, but I'm going to tell everyone the story of what happened this morning. Because right now I want you to put your hand up. Hand on heart, honestly, can you tell me three things in this region that are so different from where they were five years ago that you would want to brag to a customer about them today? If someone pulled up to you right now and said, Grant, what are three things that are different about this part of the world that weren't here five years ago? What would you say? I knew you were going to ask me that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we got a great uh, redevelopment of the Flying Doctors into the centre there. Flying Doctors, fantastic fun. reinvestment. Love to see that. Mike's here. G'day. Yeah. Uh, what's that? All of the solar, solar installations around town. I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, new, uh, new 66 new rooms down there at the 66 the new there. rooms here. Hand up, how many of you could honestly answer that question before I asked it? Hand up, come on. Yep. Every single one of you should be able to put your hand up before you leave here. That is the task I set you. 
three things that are new and different about this region that you could tell someone if they pinned you um, tonight to say what's going on at the Tourism Awards. Make sure you take note. So any questions of what Kate had to say or anyone have something to add to our conversation so far? Oh, that's right. Don't be... Just a comment Kate was saying there at the start um, about the region and everyone and, and being tired and saying it's not not the region that's tired, operators are tired, and I think you're right, and that's not a reflection negatively on any operator, it's just saying yeah. everyone is working, everyone's been working so hard, yeah. trying, you're keeping everything going, and, and with that, I'd say it's so important, and you say to people all the time about the, the holidays, yeah. and people go, oh, I don't have time for a holiday. Yeah. I think you have to make it. Got like to make you it. said, four hours drive here, and such a great reflection in that four hours, you get to give yourself even a couple of weeks. And, and then think about how much uh, reinvigorated you can be after that. One of the things the Territory struggles with is repeat visitation. So how do we re-inspire them? You know, what do they call them? The yorters. You ought to do this and you ought to do that. They're the ones who phrase caca don't and they're the ones who say it's done, I've seen it, I don't need it, I ticked it off. So how do we engage that group in saying no, 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 you ain't seen nothing yet in this part of the world. Mike, you want to jump in? I just uh, another point that, that Kate made about the, the importance of collaboration within business as well. There's so many opportunities for people to actually grow their business by working with other people. And, and that is uh, more than anywhere else that I've said, but in this town, it, it, it's, it's, it's an opportunity going begging. And uh, the other thing that actually um, enables people to find out what's going on in, in your own community uh, is, is to do that collaboration with other businesses and find out what they're doing because one of the, the worst indictments on this town is the fact that people hide their light under a bushel. There's so many amazing things going on. The fact that we've got national literary award winners yep. and, and in, incredible uh, achievements happening in a number of different industries, not just tourism, but you know, right across the board, the solar city stuff. Yep. It is, is, you know, there, there's st stuff here that's world class. No one tells anyone about it, and that's a real shame. Yeah. And there is no shame in bragging about the thing that's great about your part of the world. So it's not being boastful or being a tall poppy to try and jump up and say there's something special going on and I'm proud of what I've done. We've got to be proud to crow about the other people in our community. So I think you're absolutely spot on. Thanks, Mike. Steve, jump up so everyone can hear you. Oh, sorry. No, you're all right, mate. Steve Shearer, I'm pretty quiet. <laughs> Been around a while too. I just uh, pick up on a comment that Kate made there about um, uh, English as a second uh, language employees. I think all of us in this room have got people working for you who is English as a second language. Yep. And you know, I know that the business that I'm involved in, a lot of other businesses do employ people with that because regional and remote areas, not just here but all around Australia, have issues attracting staff. I think we need to accept that, they, that we have people um, from other cultures and other parts of the world and we need to work with those people yeah. and to train them to serve at the Roadhouse and say it's a great town to be in. Yeah. So, you know, from a positive point of view, we have to accept that we're going to have um, Hans and Heidi working for us and everybody else like that and work with those people. So turn it into a positive. Fantastic, Steve. Speaking on the positive, Gideon Baker from Aurora is going to join us um, up at the stage. So come on up, Gideon. Give me a round of applause. It says veteran uh, here on your bio. I don't know about veteran. I wouldn't put you in the veteran category just yet. You've still got uh, an amazing amount to offer just uh, right now. What... Um, what Gideon inspires me in the times that I've spent with him, this is the first time I've actually met face to face, we've had video conferences in the amazing world that is technology, um, is he's taking this message all over the world. So for us as a room, we need to make sure that the people who are taking our message to the world, not only representing their own product, but representing the heart and soul of the destination, that they have the passion um, that we have about this place. So give Gideon a round of applause and let's get him started. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning everybody um, and it is really wonderful to meet you in real life instead of virtually Mark. No worries. It's well, actually... guys, where's the good morning Gideon? Oh, yeah, good morning, thank you. And I can explain why I really am a veteran. I turn 50 next year so that must be the reason. <laughs> okay, um, the Aurora Group of which I am the Director of Sales and Marketing for, or at least I try to be, um, we operate six accommodation properties, including two here in Alice Springs. 
Although I reside in Melbourne, I must be honest and tell you that I do not live in the Northern Territory, um, I've been actively involved in Alice Springs tourism for over 15 years, both um, with the Aurora Group and with um, Lassiter's Hotel Casino. Coincidentally, um, both of them, or when I was um, involved with Lassiter's, had their sales office in Melbourne. Um, I know Alice Springs very well. I've travelled here many, many times um, over the 15 years. Um, I'm only going to base my brief presentation this morning on Alice Springs as opposed to Central Australia. I feel I'm better qualified to talk to you on my views on Alice Springs as opposed to overall Central Australia. Sadly, in my view, Alice Springs at this point in time is a tired destination. I must say I am fiercely passionate about Alice Springs. Being involved in sales and marketing from a hotel product perspective, you always end up being a destination marketer at the same time. And for those of you that work in marketing, you may be aware that you always put the destination first before the product because if people don't like the destination, they're sure as hell not going to buy your product. I have to tell you, in all the years, sorry, in the recent years that I've been travelling around the world promoting our hotel group and Alice Springs, I increasingly hear a message that Alice Springs is a tired destination. Um, it's not to say that people don't like Alice Springs, but they think it is in urgent need of some reinvigoration and some, some serious investment in the town. I can't put it to you any more clearer than that. But to substantiate my assertion, let's look at two key aspects of Alice Springs. Firstly, the Todd Mall precinct. I'm sure you would all agree with me that the Todd Mall is the town's epicentre. Does anybody don't agree with that? I mean, it is the centre of Alice Springs. However, in my opinion, it is uninspiring at this point in time. It's uninviting and it clearly is of commercial, it's declining commercially. You only have to walk up and down there and you can see what's going on. Coupled with all that, at times, it is an unsafe precinct. This is manifested by the frequent police van patrols, not to mention the unfortunate, regular, adverse publicity arising out of incidents that occur there from time to time. Last month, I was at the Australian Tourism Exchange. For those of you that may be familiar with that event, that is the premier tourism um, event that's held in various different capital cities around Australia each year. There was about 400 odd international travel buyers there, including online travel agents, wholesalers, tour operators, etc. I can't tell you how many times I was asked during my booth appointments, is it still okay to send people to Alice Springs? Well, of course it bloody well is. <laughs> it is. You know, there are so many towns and cities. I mean, I live in Melbourne. Almost every day there's a murder in the news. But for some reason, people seem to gloss over that. Poor old Alice Springs cops it. You know, Cairns has its fair share of problems. Darwin, um, all sorts of different regional tourism destinations. There are social issues. But for whatever reason... Alice Springs really cops it, and I would have to say at times I think unfairly so. Yet we know there are issues here. Maybe it's the way our publicity responds to that sort of those incidents needs to be addressed. Maybe the publicity machines, be it at Tourism NT, Tourism Central Australia, even Tourism Australia, aren't communicating a clear enough message that yet. We don't deny the fact that time to time, unfortunately, there has been incidents and there probably will be in the future, but by and large, Alice Springs is a very good place to send your clients to. If we could get a, a positive publicity 
media machine really working well out there, then I think Alice Springs will get some traction back in the marketplace. I think, sorry, going back to the Todd Mall area, it doesn't offer a quality tourism experience. These days, savvy travellers are all about seeking quality tourism experiences. Who remembers the saying, there's no town like Alice? That was the best marketing logo, because there is no town like Alice. But if we had the mall that was reinvigorated, coupled with some really good investment, could be residential, could be some sort of tourist attractions, it could be a whole mixture, it could be more restaurants, could be whatever, and really revitalise that area, I think we could make that area be seen again as, the, as underpinning that message that there is no town like Alice. But sadly, certainly from our side of things, we've seen very little evidence that there's going to be any serious investment in that area. Um, any time soon. Am I running out of time? No, 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 oh. we'll keep going. Okay. But I think the Todd Mall is the epicentre of Alice Springs and if we could really make that a pleasant place, bring tourists there, they're going to be in a really good frame of mind and then they'll be, they'll be happy to do all the wonderful experiences that this region um, has to offer. For example, why couldn't we have a daily camel parade down Todd Mall? Camels epitomise Central Australia. Look, at they do it really well in, in Broome. Tie a few camels together, lead them down, 11 o'clock every day. Tourists would come there because... Do we sell it? Let's train these people. Let's get back to basics. Yes, um, more and more of the distribution system is going online, but let me assure you, when it comes to international travel into Australia, the traditional travel trade still plays a pivotal role. Lastly, just before I wind up, TripAdvisor. It's either the hotels industry's worst enemy or its best friend, depending on what people post on there at the time. If you get the opportunity, go in there and have a look at the destination section and see some of the recent comments about Alice Springs and indeed other parts of the Northern Territory. Some of those comments, unfortunately, really give a strong message that 
hey, they come here, they don't feel comfortable, things are tired, things need to change. Yes, there are good comments as well, but there's not enough good comments to outweigh the bad comments, in my opinion, and that's disturbing. Thank you very much, and it's a pleasure to be here. Come on up to the panel, and uh, we'll keep the conversation going. Um, one thing, we've got a first question here. Stand up and... Interesting with TripAdvisor, with the destination with Alice, who's actually managing that? Because I know from my own business, if we get a... <clears throat> A comment, you know, maybe pricing, structure, whatever, we're actually able to respond to that in a positive way to whatever comments are made. Surely there must be a group, whether it's TCA or whoever, that have got the opportunity to do the same with Alice Springs in the destination section of TripAdvisor. So who would that be? That's a very good question. As far as I'm aware, it's, it's no different to hotel or restaurant comments there are, if, if it comes from, sorry, if it comes from, how do I switch that on? Hello, oh, you can hear me. <laughs> um, as far as I know, it's no different. So somebody in a, some tourism body in a, an official capacity can put comments on in the destination section. So if someone says, you know, Alice Springs is the worst place to go, for some ridiculous reason, then, then say Tourism Central Australia or Tourism NT or whatever they're called now, um, can um, um, put a comment on it. It's the and first that's what we should be doing. Uh, Dale, I, I might get you to jump in there. From Tourism Central Australia's <coughs> perspective, how are you managing the, the social media, the TripAdvisor um, environment as that takes up a bigger and bigger part of the conversation that's out there? Yeah, thanks. It's um, it's really interesting that it's been brought up this morning. It's great that Gideon's brought it up from a from a national point of view as well as us just looking at it from a from a local point of view. It's certainly something we've got flagged at the moment, and certainly something as we're expanding our social media and new media um, programming, etc. Is certainly something we're going to be looking at. So it's great that's been brought up this morning. I'm rapidly making notes up the back here, and certainly something that we will start to keep a closer eye on. So I appreciate it. Fantastic. I'll come through. Jump on up. Thanks, Mark. Uh, just two things, I guess. Instead of it being a T-I-R-E-D destination, we are a T-I-E-D destination. We are tied to the passion of the people who live here, the sincerity, the spirit of, of and cultural experiences that, that, that people can have here. So if, if, if we can be tied to that, and there are external factors, transport, planes, all that sort of stuff. The other thing about TripAdvisor is that we all live here, we eat in the restaurants, we shop. We can post things on TripAdvisor that, that will actually uh, present a really positive aspect of, of, of Alice Springs. So I uh, challenge any, uh, any and everyone in the room who lives and works here, just throw on a, a few really positive comments about the, the restaurant that you ate in, uh, the service that you received from the, from the servo, if we can sort of build that profile, then that, uh, that can really start to um, put the positives in front of the negatives. Great, great suggestion. Thanks, Phil. Um, I think this social media in response by uh, our community and industry is a, there's a fantastic opportunity here. Just as TCA has the, the brilliant volunteer program that they run, um, terrific locals who do that meet and greet, etc. There's a really great opportunity for volunteer for that to shift and change, and those volunteers to actually be on that social media. So I think it's a great opportunity for us all to explore because people don't want official, you know, responses. That's not what the tri that's not what the social media community are looking for. They're looking for that real authentic local response. But you know, I needed my whiteboard there clear and closer to me. Uh, lost without it. Well, one other point that, um, that Gideon raised was about the, the negative PR. It's one thing that I hear every time that I come here, every time we have a conversation about how do we break the nexus on tourism, was oh, but all of the, all the negative publicity. My organisation are working with the Mexican government right now. Now, if anyone knows anything about Mexico, you'll know that 47 of the top 100 most dangerous cities in the world are in Mexico. Um, they have a crime rate that has um, somewhere in the order of a thousand murders per hundred thousand people. Um, and that's a destination who knows that it can't wait for somebody else to tell its story for it. It has to fundamentally shift the way that it talks about itself. 
and they have dedicated themselves to a 20-year program of creating new world heritage areas and becoming the most sustainable tourism destination on the planet. Um, and they are going to pour their heart and souls into achieving that goal. Um, that is one way of giving a different angle to a story. So when the negative press comes out, they put the positive out about what they've achieved. What are some of the positive that you guys are putting out when that negative is coming out into the national media? What are the positive stories that are coming back to, um, to respond to those? It isn't a matter of knocking another destination. You never want to get into the place of knocking another destination. But what are we saying positively about ourselves? I'll leave that one with you. Mike, do you want to come on up and, uh, and give us a bit of a run through? Look, Micro is an inspiration to me. My organisation got a chance to work with uh, Desert Knowledge back in 2008, 2009. Um, and it was there for the first time that I saw the depth and breadth of the innovation that a region like this can have. Mike's vision for a new future for the desert regions and through Desert Knowledge um, is something that I talk about a lot when I go into communities who are trying to find what is next for us. And we often send them off to the, the Our Outback and the Pathways program that you put together, um, which I think is an inspiration. So I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say today, Mike. I've got uh, a little clicker there for you. I'll show you a last slide. Okay. Who can tell me the... Uh, I know my brain is failing, failing me here. The, the actor that was Superman? Christopher. Thank you. Christopher. George. Christopher, remember the tragic accident that occurred. I've got a, a son who's now 13, so it must be maybe eight years ago that happened. And I think it's relevant to what I'm going to say today. Um, eight years ago, I heard that Christopher Reed, Reeve had had the tragic accident and was paralysed. And I turned to my wife and said, Superman has been paralysed. And my little son looked at me and said, can he still fly? <laughs> and to me that's relevant because a lot of the stuff that we're talking about here is perceptions. And um, I'm now going to ask Mark to do the... Oh, yeah. yeah thanks, Matt. Um, and it, it's a privilege to be asked to come and speak today. Thanks, buddy. Well done. Mm -hmm. So quick. Um, it's a, to be asked to come and speak today. Um, you're a challenging group because I'm here to talk about, in part, the perceptions. Um, hang on, I'm going away. There we go. The perceptions that I've been able to have about outback tourism, and then focusing on Alice Springs. Okay, so I'm in Central Australia. Um, but just by way of background, Desert Knowledge Australia is the product of some innovative thinking in this town and innovative thinking in this town has created many things. A desert park that's world class, uh, it's created uh, um, the uh, solar city, the concept of the solar city was invented here well before an Australian government thought up a funding program. A number of things have created a desert knowledge precinct to the south of town with over $30 million worth of businesses in it and a, a, a solar site that is being studied in Germany and in the United States universities for baseline information about the technology in the solar centre. So we are leaders <clears throat> in this town in innovation in many ways. And innovators have been in tourism. Uh, tourism is an in industry of great networkers anyway. So here I am coming to try and talk at a tourism conference about an, or, an organisation, a project that you know, does networking, which you guys all do so well. So I'm just going to give you my perceptions on things and not pretend to be any expert, just to give you another perception of things. But the perception has come whoops, from the fact that we've had a bit of experience now for a few years with the support of a set of sponsors who aren't appearing there and I'm in trouble. Um, but through the support of the Australian Government and Northern Territory Government, but also BHP backing us, Qantas and Telstra backing us, and, and in this region, Southern Cross Television backing us, to look at ways of working with businesses in five different industries, including tourism industry, to um, enhance their business, basically, work together and build their businesses. And, you know, it's what was the phrase you used? Don't be, don't do, be afraid to crow about it. Well, I'm going to crow about it. We are seeing 
uh, significant international interest in what we're doing in outback business networks. Internationally, we're being asked to contribute to how do you get people working across boundaries uh, using business clusters from local regions to work together and the thing that we're doing that's different to what's being done anywhere else is the, the mix, the use of technology in doing that. Now, we're not the, you know, we certainly haven't perfected it. We're working at it, but um, it's given me the opportunity in the number of industries, including tourism, to look around the outback and uh, recently to go to New Zealand to talk about what we're doing in the outback and to, to see what's happening in region. And it's important to point out that what we're doing in, in connecting across regions is about working with local organisations. So a key organisation we work with here in Central Australia in connection to tourism has been Tourism Central Australia. Important that I point out that we're partnering with organisations across the, the region of the outback. So it's about the businesses, the people, you know, the 1,370, I think, last count businesses in our network um, we've selected some to be our business champions to represent the regions and help us continue to plan. And all of a sudden, this has become an automatic. But anyway, so moving on. In that context, I thought I'd just give you my observations. And they turn into challenges. The first observation is, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Let's be positive. This is an amazing place with amazing opportunity. The second is learn from the experience that we've had in Central Australia and from other places. And business networks allow you and other networks allow you to learn from other destinations. And I think in these times, the message collaborate when you least feel like it is an important one. When times are tough or you think times are tough, and I'm not denying they are for many in this room, the tendency is to say, I better actually just tend to my knitting, focus only on my business. But I, my point is, that's the very time when you need to be looking outside the square to look at working with other people. So I think that's my main message for today. So maybe I should walk off. But anyway, <laughs> collaborate when you least feel like it, because that's important. And it's already come up in conversation earlier on today. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Well, we've already talked about the wonderful place we have, the wonderful, I mean, from yesterday flying back into Alice and a, the unfortunate um, chore of talking to a gorgeous Russian woman who was visiting Alice Springs for the first time, so I had to sort of get, do the tourist spiel. And I was saying to her, look, you know, the first thing you're gonna notice is the light. You, you, you've been in Sydney for years. Just wait for it. And my, my warning to people is always, be careful, if you stay here too long, you'll never get away. We're all walking ambassadors for the place, and I'm, I know I'm preaching to the converted. Um, wow, this is going to carry away on me. Anyway, um, <coughs> so you've now seen my presentation. Okay, so... I think we need to deal with the perceptions and realities, the Superman story in some ways, um, and be part of the solution about the poor perceptions, but don't deny that there's problems too. Let's be part of solving those, and that's a huge challenge in this town. Part of solving the perceptions is part of that as well. Um, do you want to deal with that? Because I'm getting carried away there. And that's not going to go charging off on me. As you can see, I'm well in the forefront of technology. <laughs> I've always got someone to solve the problem for me. And that's part of networking, isn't it? Okay. Um, the second point about this baby and bathwater thing is, aren't we well placed to actually use a lot of support services? It's happening again, isn't it? Let me talk about that. And this was written before I saw this morning's announcements. 
Um, we've actually got the ability in this industry to access incredible research capacity at, at many levels. We've got the ability to collaborate on marketing. Marketing processes set up so well uh, that other industries are envious of it. Um, we've also got business support systems. Um, <laughs> okay, what I'm going to get you to do, mate, is um, if you can deal with the uh, this and uh, just take off the automatic. Yeah, great. So we've got the research capacity, we've got the marketing support, we've got business support at many levels, including things like Enterprise Connect, uh, the local uh, uh, Northern Territory Agency support. So you've got these layers of support that we can use. Um, they're waiting, they're ready to go with the willing. My suggestion is be the willing. The fact that you're in this room, the fact that you're supportive of getting this destination moving in a stronger way uh, means that you're the willing. You've got all these amazing support systems, use them is my suggestion and my perception because visiting other regions, I don't see the same opportunities in the same level and obviously I understand there's something on the front page of the paper, I haven't seen it this morning, but there's an even stronger opportunity there arising, it's very... Uh, very uh, good opportunity for us. So we've got the support systems, we've got the fact it's a different presentation, you know. <laughs> it's the front page, just in case. And so, and so it should be the home of tourism. So uh, I'll depart from this. What we so we've got this amazing opportunity. We've got these great support structures, and we've got a lot of low-hanging fruit I want to talk about. Dare I try it again? <coughs> so, indigenous connection, key events and creativity. The creativity. Who else has a beanie festival? Okay. But we've got some events that are going on in this town that need refreshing, need new thinking. And I'm not going to specifically name any. I think we know that we need to evolve events as we go. And, and I was involved in you know, the Masters Games in, in previous years. A great idea from this town. There's many different events that we're running that are, that are excellent. Um, the Green Red Centre is the way I, uh, a colleague of mine referred to the opportunity here. The fact that we've got all this amazing you know, solar energy, all the different uh, renewable energy opportunities. The fact that that links into things like a national curriculum in, in education, a real interest in that area across the world, gives us another opportunity to have yet another showcase opportunity here. Okay, now I heard some of these phrases for the first time recently at a briefing um, from when the uh, the CEO of Tourism Australia was here, and the, the signature experiences. I'm not sure that we as a destination <coughs> have addressed that. In fact, I'm certain we haven't, but it's an amazing opportunity we have. We've certainly recognised Indigenous engagement and uh, Indigenous tourism pro product as a real opportunity for us. Um, that's still developing, we've recognised it. Have we grasped, grasped it in the way that we should? There's the environmental engagement, people wanting to, uh, amazingly, wanting to volunteer their time to go and work in the environment, do that and call it a holiday, um, amongst other people that want to spend a lot of money to go and see particular environmental things, and I've already mentioned the major events. So in learning from the, our experience and from other places, I, I guess I pose the question, when we're doing things well, what are we doing? Let's look at that. And I was impressed, and we're all impressed with the advertising of the New Zealand product, and when I had the opportunity to visit New Zealand recently, I realised they're delivering on what they promise. Um, so I, th I thought I'd just have a little thought about where, what New Zealand is doing. And then just look at where are we best placed, and there's the dreaded bell. So, what do we do best when we're doing things well? We know our target markets. 
we develop appropriate product and we deliver it on that and we stay ahead of the game. Now, if we look at ourselves now, are we doing that in everything? No, we're not. I don't think there's any question. Oh dear, what a surprise. What does New Zealand do? Exactly the same thing. They know who they're targeting, they develop the product that's appropriate, and they stay ahead of the game. Um, so then there's... It's amazing what's happened to that slide. There's a few opportunities, aren't there? And I've heard these mentioned all around the place. There's the high-end market, the China market, the environmental tourists, the gay market, the signature experience market. And I question, is there only one answer? And I guess if we find, um, if we find a gay Chinese rich person that wants to come bushwalking, we've got it all sorted, haven't we? But, but I don't know that the market's all that big. So maybe we have to look at a few markets. So, collaborate when we feel, that, uh, feel least like it, okay? We're crazy not to hunt as a pack, and this, this industry does it well. Let's keep that mentality. I've got a couple of, ex uh, of outback examples that I'll show you. And from this place, I thought I'd just demonstrate a few what I thought were low-hanging fruit. To my mind, there's a difference between being a member of something and actually engaging and being part of the group that's hunting as a pack. And the first thing you've got to do is work out why you're there. Um, we talk about different layers of engagement in our back business networks. There's the ones who know why they're there, actively getting engaged and go for it and get something out of it. Others are more just interested in looking from the sidelines, that's fine. When they find their area of engagement, they engage and they become part of the, the bigger group. Don't be ashamed of the fact that you're collaborating for self-interest. Make it really clear that that's why you're there. You're in business. You're there for, for that benefit. There are many other benefits, community benefits as well, but don't be afraid to say, I'm here because I'm here for self-benefit. And be clear on the rules of engagement, we always say. Make sure that you by saying I'm here for business reasons and I want to work with you, I'm developing my rules of engagement and being clear about them. So a couple of outback examples. Great to hear uh, Trevor's uh, statement that you're all visitor centres, visitor information centres, whether you like it or not. One of the things we've tried to do through outback business networks is get visitor centres from across the outback to regularly have uh, phone links or other using other media to work together to learn from each other and to work with each other and promote each other. Similarly, there's a pastoral tourism group that I'll show you about who are working together to look at promoting each other and, and working together. And I want to show you a bloke in, in Broken Hill because he's an amazing character. So the pastoral tourism group in South Australia building on an outback uh, uh, Outback New South Wales group got together 20 individual stations to look at collaborative marketing and to look at, at learning from each other and in fact developing applications and maps and now looking at sharing some of the supply costs and things like that. The point is that the, the mob in the Midwest Gascoigne that are part of our network have developed this uh, Gascoigne Merchants and Outback pathway and a modelling what they're doing on what's happening in far north South Australia and the, uh, the group from uh, Woolleen Station is particularly leading this. The aim is that there'll be a national group of outback pastoral tourism people working together. Just an example of people who saw self-interest absolutely in working together. You'll have examples of that in your own business. There's a bloke in Broken Hill named Jason King. Has anyone been to Bell's Milk Bar in, in Broken Hill? Right. Amazing character, creating still syrups and that for milkshakes, but a marketing expertise about knowing that I've got an individual product and I'm linking it to the identity of my town, I'm linking it to history, I'm linking it to other networks, a key operator in the Outback Business Networks. So many individuals like that I could talk about. Didn't choose any in Alice because I'd embarrass people, but I do want to embarrass this bloke. There's a good example of 
someone realising that by collaborating he'd benefit and he'd do a broader community benefit as well. And so Trevor, well done for um, uh, donating the blower to the Hall, uh, Transport Hall of Fame. I'm sure some of you would have seen that, but that's a local example of someone understanding the benefits of networks and I'm not pretending that there aren't many more examples in this room. So, here's some quick examples of what I thought might be low-hanging fruit. I heard this at that briefing too, and it's so obvious to me that, um, I mean, I, I don't know if any of you remember the Lassiter's Indoor Challenge, what an aptly known thing that was, where years ago we brought together people to play various games, including bridge and uh, chess and various other things. It was an attempt to try and stretch the shoulder season of tourism in Central Australia. Um, there's an opportunity for you in this room, because you're the willing ones, to look at ways that you can stretch that season. We talk about needing more flights into town. Let's fill the seats that are coming to town already. So that's one that, to me, is a, is a real opportunity. That local perceptions and, and the issues locally be part of the solution is my challenge. and and work together on it and I, TCA needs to be a clear part of that. Environmental tourism collaboration, a huge opportunity. I, I don't pretend to know whether or not things have started there, but if it hasn't, there's your chance. There's an opportunity for a group of you to get together and say, we'll create business out of this environmental tourism opportunity. Um, I see the Outback Way as another piece of low hanging fruit that we can still build on. It's a real opportunity, especially when there's, there's still the drive market. And I challenge you to go to New Zealand as a fact-finding mission. But actually, it's not just a, that's not a joke. I really think that some key players in the industry need to be looking at other destinations and saying, what's, are we still a, how do we get ahead of the game? So think about it as an investment for your business. So Mike, that's a job for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. All, all of the people, all of the tourism people give to New Zealand to promote the Central Corridor. Well, I'd be prepared to go to Qantas and say, will you partner with us? So I'll, I'll work on, with it if you want to, OK? Doesn't mean I have to go. I'm not looking for a trip to New Zealand. But I'm just saying, they're the sorts of things that the partners are interested in. And I'll just give you another little piece of low-hanging fruit. At that same briefing, one of the members of the uh, Outback Business Networks mentioned at the meeting that insurance was a big issue. And so we did a bit of thinking about that and thought, well, why don't we send out a message to Outback Business Networks, and I'm taking this as an opportunity to promote it to you. If insurance, and I'm sure it is, is a big issue, why don't we hunt us a pack on that? Why don't we look at, we can get a better deal on the cost side of things that's gonna help us as an industry. So there's a meeting already called, talk to me later if you wanna know about it. So I throw back to you the three challenges. Don't throw the baby out with, uh, with the bathwater. You've already got a fantastic place. You've already got wonderful product. The opportunity is to refresh and move forward. And you do that by learning from the past, other regions of Outback Australia and from other destinations in the world. And it's the time to collaborate, not to do what maybe you're feeling about you should do. Thank you, I've taken extra time, but thank you very much. Well. We've got just uh, a few minutes, really, just a very few minutes before the uh, recaffeination break, the stand up, stretch the legs, refill the, um, the sugar tank up. So I wanted to take Mike's challenge and give a few of you in the opportunity, uh, a few of you in the room the opportunity to say, so what's the new thinking? You've had some great speakers, we've had a nice little conversation, um, but now I put the challenge to you. What's the new thinking that came out of today's discussion? I've got the uh, consultant's pen and the consultant's paper, so, um, so hit me with them. What are the things that you're taking out of today um, that we need to change? Yes, uh, thanks, Jeff. Paul Elliott from Alice Springs Camera House, and I'm recently a member, uh, board member of the Bendigo Bank. I've just attended their national conference in Melbourne, and uh, 900 delegates. The important thing to come out of that particular conference was that um, some of the regional centres have joined up with a group global called, um, what's it called? I'll just bring it up here. It's called the Awesome Foundation. Now that's a global foundation. They do grants for uh, inno innovative ideas. 
So I came away from that conference thinking, let's adopt the principles of that into uh, tourism here. Let's call it the awesome connection. It's a positive thinking initiative promoted by leadership shareholders, TCA, Alice Springs Town Council and the Convention Centre. What it does, it acknowledges the awesomeness of the outback. It promotes the awesomeness, awesomeness of the outback and it expands the awesome connection group to individuals, groups and schools. Now, who drives that? I think Tourism Central Australia have to drive that. We've heard this morning about a lot of ideas and plans that's got to come back to Tourism Central Australia. It's all, all very well, us nodding our heads, but who's going to drive it? So I'm working on three projects at the moment. The Awesome Connection, a tax-free zone for the precinct of Todd Mall, and also we are all tour guides in principle. Now, it's all very well to say we're all tour guides, but someone has to get out there and do the teaching. I think it's got to come from Tourism Central Australia. So I've got three projects on the go. I am, I am on the outside, I'm in a retail environment, but you send all the customers to me and this is what I'm thinking about. Thanks very much. Last opportunity before I let you uh, grab that cup of coffee that so many of you desperately need. Um, I've just got collaboration and partnerships are a key in moving forward. Yeah. And how um, do we make that work, Christine? What are we doing that we're not doing already? <coughs> um, I think we could use the Red Centre. Oh, sorry. I think we could use the Red Centre National Landscape Forum as a, a more collaborative forum. It's um, well set up to do that. Um, I think in terms of innovating, innovative thinking as well. That's a forum that could. For the Red Centre way, I know there are other people in the room, but that's a forum that could actually start to, to create some new ideas and some way forwards. Um, and I've got the same one at the, the beginning as well, brag about our successes. I think very often we forget to do that, and that's something that's um, easily done and a key um, way of setting a positive example. Thanks, Christine. Uh, one of the things that might put the challenge out there was uh, an environmental tourism partnership. Quick show of hands, who would be interested right now from today to begin an environmental tourism partnership to put positive environmental messages about this destination into the, uh, into the world? Have a look around at each other, there's a lot of you. Go outside, start having a chat, share business cards, come back and um, the first thing I want you to do when we come back into the room, Trevor, you're going to lead it? Is that, you're going to start this ball off? What I'm about to say is Ecotourism Australia, they actually have a, a program uh, called Climate Action Businesses, where even as an operator, although you might not be out there in vehicles, whatever, you can actually, there's a program where you can become climate certified uh, by becoming either a climate action business and so on. So that's already out there that you should be using, but then you could also be cooperating together once you've achieved that yeah. as a body group to be able to present to your business. And you'll have a number of businesses in the room. Who's already certified? Uh, Earthcheck certified? Ecotourism certified? You've already got a number of good stories to tell. Start that network today, share some business cards and come back into the room after the cuppa and, uh, and tell us how far you've got. Jeff, my chair, back to, uh, back to you or uh, straight on to morning tea. Well, we've got about 20 minutes. So. Oh, have we? Yep. I've got my times wrong. I'm, uh, I'm working on Queensland time, aren't I? Beautiful. Turn the clock back around. Well, let's keep that conversation going. You could have the uh, environmental tourism. Mike Toomey, I'm going to pick on you. Inspirations from this morning. Great ideas that came out of the, uh, the discussion this morning. What should we be taking forward? Well, I think we've got to work together, collab collaboratively, to, to all focus on, on, on what we actually want to present as an air region as, as on a whole. Yep. And I think people here are the, are the ones that are going to have to drive this. Particularly impressed with what Desert Knowledge are doing. Absolutely. Um, something really simple that Kate said really resonated with me, obviously being in um, a customer-focused operation, and that's really, truly engaging <coughs> with our customers every single day. And that's us as the leaders of our business being responsible for the people we have in the front line and A, providing them with the knowledge and B, I guess, making sure that we've got the right people with the right attitude that are talking to our customers. So showing them 
the outback soul, showing them the unique experiences that they're not going to be able to experience anywhere else. So really on a day-to-day -day basis, engaging with every single person we meet so that they're able to go back to wherever they're from and speak about the region in a positive light. Fantastic. And that picks up on Steve's yeah. point before about, you know, Heidi and, um, and Hans, um, that they've got to be able to embrace that passion that you have for the region, um, for whether they're here for two weeks, two months, or two years, they need to have that passion. I'm sure they're not breaking any guidelines by diet by having them here for two years. One more at the back and then I'm going to... Can I just say, as someone who is in the front line, uh, the word that's resonating with me this morning is knowledge. Yeah. And I wish that 20 years ago, when I was an inbound operator in Sydney, bringing tours from UK, North America and New Zealand into the Territory, I wish that I had known then what I know now about the region. Of course, I've lived here for 20 years now, but as an operator, I was marketing tours, packaging tours, bringing people to this place. I had no idea that a defining feature was the McDonnell Ranges, the Davenport Ranges. I had no idea of that. And bringing people to, when packaging, bringing people to the Territory, I sold things on a lot of spin. And, and I, I hear about what, you know, I hear all of these wonderful things that are happening and, and, and I know that we do have some very tired infrastructure and I, I also know that we have a very, very vibrant region and we've not even come close to reaching our potential as a destination and knowledge, it, it's all going to come back to knowledge and, and acknowledging those people who are on the front counter and I would like to just represent them, that we need the support to have the knowledge. A great idea. Um, that's been tried in a few different places. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. Um, I know, um, Joanne, I'm gonna, not going to pick on you. I'm just going to reference to you that you know, there is the, um, the tour guides version of that, which was the, um, the outback guides or the desert guides, um, and that needs some reinvigoration. But we've seen that idea of savannah guides and desert guides actually start to trickle right the way down to the visitor information centres and the frontline staff to say, Come on in, I know it's hard to get time away from the front desk when we're all so short staffed, but how do we start to share some of that passion and knowledge that people who are on the ground have with those who get the opportunity to speak to our customers? So I think that's something you could really take forward. Katie, you wanted to jump in there? Yeah, I did. Um, firstly, thank you all three of you. I thought that was really very, very interesting. Um, I think it's a really important point to note, and I'll yell for those of you that can't hear me. I think Gideon raised some really, really valid points. Um, and it gives us an outsider's perspective of what our town looks like. And I think one of the best points you've made is the fact that we are all working incredibly hard. Everybody is tired. But one of the really important points I think you made was we have to work on our businesses. You know, not just working in them and being in it every single day. We need to look at it with a fresh perspective and we need to think about what is it that we've seen 55 times and the customer's seen for the first time. And I think working on your business as well as giving yourself time to be in it um, is actually a really critical point and I think, you know, it was very well made. Absolutely. Thanks, Kate. Steve Orenshaw, you're um, just there. I would like you to spend a few seconds talking about how Service Skills Australia and the program that you um, will be talking a bit more about this afternoon might be able to help businesses spend a bit more time on their business because it's easy to say, hard to do, we all struggle with it. Steve, in, in a very, you know, the 30 second version. Um, it's hard enough doing the two hour version. I know, I know. Um, look, yeah, I, I actually was scribbling some notes earlier on whilst I was listening to, particularly to Mike talking and, and, and the whole idea of networking just keeps coming to mind. Service Skills Australia has been very fortunate in being uh, provided with some reasonably decent financial resources from the Department of Innovation, etc., down in Canberra to run a program over the next couple of years specifically focused on tourism and hospitality. It's all about innovative workforce development. So it's very strategic, it's very enterprise focused. In fact, it is completely enterprise focused. It is all about the business, the people on the ground, the people who are actually engaging with tourists, who are engaging with customers engaging with anybody who's a consumer in tourism and hospitality. The, the program itself can, uh, has three components to it, and the one that's probably the most significantly relevant here today is Project One, which is about the eight um, regional tourism hotspots around the country that the, the State and Territory Tourism Ministers identified uh, last October or, or thereabouts, Red Centre being one of those tourism hotspots. We're literally in a position where we have funding allocated for the Red Centre for us to be able to provide skills advisors 
who are very specifically focused on coming into and working alongside businesses in a face-to-face -face situation, so not over the phone, not via email, not via teleconferencing, etc., but literally in the business with the person in a mentoring type role over a six month period. Now their primary focus is helping undertake a diagnostic. That diagnostic has an initial start point, but is a continuance over that six months. So as you experience and explore and develop understanding through that process of engagement, you're accumulating on the diagnostic. Therefore, the feedback is growing and becoming more laid, more detailed, and more proactive in how it can be actually applied at a business level, at a street yeah, level. Fantastic. There's 30 seconds. Um, I wouldn't want to get between you and the morning tea break. Just one thing. Um, Steve has 40-something places um, only for that spot, and there are probably that many of you. So do not leave today without giving him your business card and expressing an interest in joining that program and getting access to a skills advisor as just one of the many ways that you can get engaged. So thank you everyone for a really informative and, uh, and motivating session. Go and get fueled up and get back in here by... Well, I'd say probably about 15 minutes, Mark. Done deal. Industry delegates, big round of applause for the first session. Thank you so much and thank you, Mark. See you in 15 minutes.